So this topic needs no introduction, but I'll give it one anyway. We're dealing with a concept that is probably one of the most fundamental and pervasive that you're going to come across in your introductory studies in chemistry, and that is, of course, stoichiometry. Say it with me now. Stoichiometry. Stoichiometry. But what do we use stoichiometry for in chemistry? Hmm. Now to introduce stoichiometry, we're going to take a look at a balanced chemical equation. And the reaction that we're going to take a look at is the one in which potassium chlorate decomposes into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Now notice there are a whole bunch of numbers involved in this chemical reaction. Not only the numbers of atoms that exist in each one of these compounds or molecules, but also in the number of the compounds and molecules themselves in order to balance out that chemical equation. What stoichiometry allows us to do is start comparing quantities of reactants and products together. So that if we have a certain amount of reactant, we can figure out how much product we can produce. Or if we know how much product was produced, we can then in turn figure out how much reactant must have been used up in order to produce that product. But what it relies on is an understanding not only of the numbers in the balanced chemical equation, but also in the masses of those components. Because if you remember, we can't easily count out atoms or molecules. In fact, it would be almost impossible due to the sheer number of them that would be involved in a chemical reaction. But what we can do is count out and take quantity of a large number of them. So we can mass, using say an electronic balance, a large number of these molecules or compounds or atoms. But how do we compare the numbers in the balanced chemical equation to the mass of those reactants and products. Remember, this is a number ratio, not a mass ratio. So we have to have a go-between between mass and number. And that, of course, is molar mass. It allows us to establish, based on the grams per mole, the number of moles of a particular substance we have if we know the mass. And if we know the number of moles and use the molar mass, we can then figure out the mass. So putting this all together, if you have understood the previous steps of being able to do mole calculations and the previous vodcast on being able to do mole ratios, you already have all of the tools necessary to succeed at stoichiometry. So let's take a look at how we'd go about this process. Now, in stoichiometry, what we're going to do typically in our introduction to stoichiometry, you will start out with a mass of a particular reactant. And when we deal with a mass of a particular reactant, we then have to convert it to moles. Remember, moles is sort of the common currency of chemistry, but really the point behind that is that we start with a mass, but in order to start comparing reactant to reactant or reactant to product or vice versa, remember that we're dealing with a balanced chemical equation relating to number. So we have to convert our mass into number, and of course the number unit that we use in chemistry is the mole. So using our molar mass, we can convert from the mass of our reactant to the number of moles of our reactant. And this is where our mole ratio comes in. Because if we want to start comparing the number of moles of a reactant to a product, we use the mole ratio of that reactant and product from the balanced chemical equation to do that conversion. And if you haven't watched the previous vodcast on how to do mole uh, conversions, I would strongly suggest that you do at this point. And then, in most of these introductory stoichiometry exercises, we're going to be asked to figure out the mass of another reactant or the mass of a product that's produced as a result. So whatever compound you figured out through that mole ratio, you are then going to use in order to establish the mass. So ultimately, stoichiometry allows us to take the value of a reactant or product, use the molar ratio in order to figure out how many moles of the reactant or product we should produce, and of course, if we're starting with mass and ending with mass, it's the molar mass that acts as the go-between to allow us to do that. Now let's take a look at a more detailed approach as to how I think you should solve a stoichiometric problem. And what I suggest that my students do is that they lay out what I call a game plan in order to figure out what calculations they're going to have to perform, in what order, and it really just helps them get an idea of the steps that are involved in solving a stoichiometric calculation. They're not really difficult calculations individually, they're multiplication and division and uh, ratios, but you have to understand the order in which they occur if you're going to get the correct value. So let's say that we were trying to determine the mass of a particular compound that is going to be produced from the decomposition of potassium chlorate. If we started with an initial mass of potassium chlorate, 
And since we know the formula of potassium chlorate, we can figure out its molar mass. In fact, for any compound, if you know its name and can figure out its formula, you can calculate its molar mass. And since we have the initial mass of potassium chlorate, and we know its molar mass, we can figure out the number of moles. And you can really do this for just about any stoichiometric problem because the mole is the common currency that you're going to use. But of course there is a reason for this. Remember, we're dealing with a balanced chemical equation that involves numbers as the coefficients. These are number relationships, not mass relationships. So we cannot compare the mass of a reactant to the mass of the products based on the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation because the two don't line up. We're comparing numbers and mass. That's apples and oranges, so we cannot do that. We have to convert our mass into moles, and again, it's the molar mass that allows us to do that. But notice the way that I've set up this game plan of mine. I have the mass set over top of the molar mass to equal the number of moles. And notice that this corresponds to our molar relationship, that is the number of moles equals mass over molar mass. So that's our first of three calculations. The second calculation is where our mole ratio comes in. If you haven't watched the previous vodcast on mole ratios, I strongly suggest that you do that now. What it allows us to do is determine the number of moles of what we're looking for, which is our target, from the number of moles of our known, that is what we started with. So what you're going to do is set up a mole ratio where you're trying to establish the unknown moles, that is the moles of the thing that you're trying to look for, be it another reactant or one of the products, which is more likely, and you're going to use the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation, just like we did in the previous vodcast, to figure that out. And once you've set that up, that is, you've figured out the number of moles of the unknown, it's just a matter of almost going in reverse. Now we're going to use the number of moles of our unknown and the molar mass of our unknown to figure out the mass of it. So, if we're trying to figure out the mass of one of our products, as is the case here, we're going to use the number of moles of the product that we established from our second calculation, the mole ratio calculation. We're going to go up, so it's going to be in reverse. Since we divided on the way down, we're going to multiply on the way up. And what we're going to see is that we get the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass, and that's going to give us the mass of our unknown. And again, notice the way that I've set it up. We divide moving down, we multiply going up, and what you're going to see is that this equals the relationship of calculating mass using the mole. Mass equals the number of moles times molar mass. And if you follow this game plan, it's going to make those stoichiometric calculations, especially when you're first starting out with them, that much easier. So hopefully this video has given you a bit of an introduction to what stoichiometry is and how it helps us in chemistry. Ultimately what it allows us to do is figure out how much product is going to be produced from reacting two amounts of reactants or three amounts of reactants or one amount of reactant in the case of our decomposition reaction and it allows us to figure out how much product is going to be produced rather than just randomly trying to figure it out. We now have an idea prior to the reaction how much we should expect. And then that will allow us to, down the road, evaluate how successful and how efficient our reaction was. So this, I can't underscore this enough, is one of the most crucial calculations that you're going to do in your introductory chemistry courses. So you should practice, 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 and try to become a pro at stoichiometry. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Did you not like the video? Was there something that seemed like it was a little off? Well, either way, we want to hear about it. So like us or leave a comment in the section below as to things that we could change or improve. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube or follow us on Twitter.